Hello and welcome to my channel. Um, I have another story for you today. It's a little bit longer than some of them, but I hope um, you'll enjoy it. It's based as ever on five random words and the words are, and this story is called Aloha. Professor Martin McCullers finally yielded to his precocious 12 year old daughter Rosalie's insistent demands and agreed to show her the facility where the signal had first been detected. His pass card still functioned because he hadn't returned it as he'd been instructed to and nobody had noticed yet. McCullers also hadn't informed either his daughter or his wife Melissa that he'd been fired from the Mount Braddock SETI project. Secrecy had become a way of life to Professor McCullers or Marty as he insisted his students address him. Go on dad, you promised. It hadn't been so much what Rosalie said, the habitual whine of an adolescent insisting on parental justice, as how she'd said it, with that plaintive head tilt and wide-eyed stare Marty could never say no to. So it was that on the evening of the 12th of February 2026, he drove his daughter from their home, nestling on the edge of the forest, up the winding single-track roads to the rocky mountaintop facility. Originally just an observatory, Mount Braddock was at the vanguard of quantum entanglement research. Just three weeks previously, a breakthrough had occurred which would change humanity's understanding of its place in the universe forever, except, that is, if the government had its way. McCullough's team at the facility had solved a problem that had bothered SETI researchers for some time. If extraterrestrial life was ever detected from alien signals broadcast across the universe, the likely distances involved would mean that the civilizations originating those signals would most probably have died out or evolved significantly in the thousands or even millions of years it had taken that signal to reach Earth, let alone any reply. Conversations would become impossibly attenuated by the vast distances involved. McCullers explained this to his daughter. You know when there's a news broadcast and the presenter asks the journalist a question, there's a delay before they hear the presenter's voice and can respond. Yes, it's really annoying and they look really dumb. Well, imagine that times a million. Every light year, by definition, adds a year in signal transmission delay. If we get a signal back from Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to ours, then that signal was sent over four years ago. That's the best we can do, unless we somehow intercept an alien ship buzzing our solar system. So. Talking to aliens is pointless, Rosalie asked, as they stood at the gates of the Braddock facility and Professor McCullers let them in with his passcode and thumbprint scan. Well, the usual method, monitoring likely electromagnetic signals, is really a branch of archaeology. The only meaningful message you could send that way would be aloha, which, as you know, means both hello and goodbye. Now, our new method, well, that's where the magic lies. Quantum entanglement, Rosalie piped up. She'd evidently been reading the pile of books he'd placed by her bedside. That's right, he replied proudly. We take a cloud of particles in a Bose-Einstein condensate. A what? Whatty? Um, just a bunch of really cold particles, he explained as they entered his laboratory. Fortunately, nobody was still working this late. A strict 10pm curfew had been instituted recently, something to do with work-life balance. McCullers started flicking switches, booting up the call box, as they colloquially called it. They didn't have long. He was sure they must have tripped a silent alarm somewhere. At just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero, we can make these particles act as if they are all identical. This means if we separate them and then alter one of them in some way, the other, spatially distinct particles, all respond exactly like the one we're directly affecting. Like Newton's cradle. McCullough shook his head. No, that's the transference of kinetic energy between solid objects, and it takes a time. It looks instantaneous, but it takes a few microseconds before the ball at the far end moves in response to the first ball hitting the second. Quantum entanglement changes really do happen instantaneously, no matter how far apart the particles are from one another. Rosalie looked confused as she slid into a swivel chair in front of one of the consoles. But nothing travels faster than the speed of light, that's right, but there's nothing travelling in this scenario. The particles really do become, to all intents and purposes, the same particle. 
Anyhow, this is how we came up with the quantum entanglement communicator, or QUEC. We have a lattice of entangled particles we can form into patterns, basically ones and zeros. We've made an 8-bit communicator, a galactic pager. It's humanity's greatest invention since, well, the wheel. Cool, let me see, Rosalie said, spinning in her chair as McCullers finished powering up the device. We can probably only be here for a minute or two before they send someone, McCullers warned, but we might get one of the oglers online if we're lucky. Is that what the aliens are called? That's just our nickname for them. We classified their planet OGLE 2014 BLG 0124L. I know, catchy, isn't it? McCullers flicked one last bank of switches on and stood back. A screen flickered into life and a cursor winked amidst the black. McCullers handed his daughter a wireless keyboard. Go on then, type. What he was doing was an outrageous breach of protocol, but McCullers no longer cared. The US government had voted to cut funding to the program and arrest anyone who spoke of it under national security provisions. This seemed short-sighted, immoral, and deeply unfair to Rosalie's generation, who ought to know the wonderful truth that there were many civilizations out there in the vastness of interstellar space, and none of them had heard of Jesus, Jehovah or Allah. None of the intelligent species so far discovered even had the concept of God. Earth alone had retained that theorem. The government felt that this knowledge would prove devastating to Earth's estimated five billion believers, and so it was deemed wisest to pull the plug. When McCullers had argued vehemently in a closed congressional hearing that this was wrong, he had been unceremoniously released from both his research role and his professorship. Rosalie, who from infancy had grown up with text communication as a natural way of engaging with other minds, was typing furiously. McCullers stopped her with a gentle hand upon her wrist. They've only just learned English. You have to use fewer words. Rosalie hit the delete button and bit her lip, thinking intently. How far away are the oglers? 25,000 light years, McCullers replied. You won't be meeting face to face any time soon. I don't, to be honest, no, even if they even have faces. Rosalie began typing again, more slowly this time. Hello, I'm Rosalie. Who are you? They waited. Nothing happened. Might just not be online, McCullers replied, or they may just perceive time entirely differently from how we do. But that's a whole other con... His mental flow was interrupted by a cascade of letters appearing on screen. We are Lithrocopus Antona. We are happy of see you. They haven't quite got our grammar yet, but bear in mind it's only been three weeks since we started talking, explained McCullers. Rosalie was already typing back. Hi Lithri, how are you today? A much quicker response came through. I am not today, I'm Lithri. McCullers laughed. You have to be really explicit rather than ambiguous. I don't know if it's a linguistic or a psychological barrier. They just don't seem to have irony or idiomatic expressions or metaphor or anything like that. Rosalie thought carefully then typed, Are you well today? This proved much more successful. The reply appeared momentarily. Well this day, many gratitudes. Suns are in the sky, drunets are flying. They have three suns, would you believe? McCullers whispered as if somehow the oglers might hear him. Nuts, said Rosalie. What are drunets? We think there's something like birds. We haven't been able to send anything like a drawing or a photograph yet. That was going to be our next project. As McCullers finished talking, he heard the faint sound of tires on gravel. Here we go, he thought. Rosalie hadn't noticed anything. She was far too focused. She would have made a brilliant analyst. McCullers felt his eyes moistening, so saddening was the small-mindedness of the imbeciles shutting all this down. Whole new branches of science would be strangled at birth. The analytical study of an alien race would create whole new fields in sociology, psychology, biology, and pretty much any discipline you could shove an exo in front of. McCullers felt he wanted to warn the ogler, Luthery, that there might be no more communication for a while. While Rosalie considered what to type next, he quickly tapped out. Communication may be interrupted. We are sorry. And then came, and the reply came immediately. Why interrupted? I have no idea how to answer that, admitted McCullers, as half a dozen 
heavily armed soldiers led by Professor Lysander Streep, McCullough's ex-boss. Streep in her early 40s stood an imperious six foot two and had a military bearing that would have been imposing even if she hadn't had an armed guard with her. Rosalie ducked instinctively behind her father. What the hell do you think you're doing, McCullers? demanded Streep. McCullers found himself shaking but managed to growl defiantly, I'm saying goodbye to our guests. Streep sighed and turned to her reinforcements. A clear-up team will be here to strip it in an hour. For now, just render it inoperable, Captain. The Captain, who looked scarcely 30, seemed bewildered by the array of computers and gadgetry surrounding him. Destroy the consoles, man, she ordered. Use your rifle butt. Professor McCullers couldn't believe he'd been fooled by Streep for so long. She'd always been reluctant to outline her scientific credentials when he tried to engage her in conversation, so he'd just written her off as an administrator. Now he realised she'd been a government plant from day one. An explosion of sparks leapt from a bank of computers as the soldiers went to work. McCullers and his daughter backed away, aghast at the destruction. McCullers couldn't help but protest. The condensate will heat up. The particles will disentangle. This is cultural vandalism. McCullers shouted to no avail as the screen containing Lithri's last words faded and blurred out to eternal darkness. It had taken four years for Voyager 2 to carry its payload of entangled particles out to the centre of the galaxy, awaiting an advanced civilization to pick up the receiver, so to speak. Now that connection had been irretrievably broken, and with it, first contact with an alien species consigned to a historical footnote, no doubt to be redacted out of existence. Well, that was the idea, at least. Dad, whispered Rosalie from behind his shoulder, that was amazing. I'll remember that forever. If they let us live, thought McCullers, before dismissing the thought as melodramatic. Deep down, the forces of retrograde solipsism must know their days of self-enforced ignorance are numbered. He decided to let Rosalie into one more secret, whispering back, I didn't keep all the particles here. I sent a batch of condensate out to a dozen other labs in India, China, Britain, Switzerland, South Africa, and the International Space Station. They can't stop this. Rosalie smiled a secretive smile, and McCullers had a fleeting vision that she would one day lead the world towards universal unity, the ultimate goal of the Quek project, permanent links between all galactic civilizations, and a realization that we are not alone and never will be again. Marty McCullers gripped his daughter's hand tightly as the technology fizzled and buzzed out of existence. The Luddites hadn't stood a chance, a Norwood Streep and her kind. Aloha, Rosalie whispered. Goodbye and hello. The end, but not the end. So that was fun, doing a lot of research into uh, quantum entanglement. Um, that's one of those ideas that could potentially cope with some enhancement or um, well cope with perhaps becoming a longer thing a novella if not an actual novel I'll think about it anyway I hope you enjoyed that and um, if you did feel free to subscribe maybe watch another one I say this every week but you know please do <laughs> share uh, and hopefully we'll grow the channel and I will come back soon with another story thank you